Hello everybody, welcome to our videos. My name's Jamie from Wonders Games. Today we're doing a games pick up video. Okay, I'm sure you guys are not surprised what I'm going to say, but once again, I am behind on these pickup videos. But anyway, this is what I bought in a combination of November and December 2020. First game I bought on the Mega, fairly newish game, this is Trap Runner. Trap Runner is a classic platform game with a few twists, mind traps, obstacles and numerous monsters. Besides being a typical jump and run action game, you can duck to avoid contact with low flying monsters, collect potions in order to fill transparent ghost tiles with colour, making them solid. In later levels, mysterious magic pills will help you in your task to save Jay's girlfriend. There you go. There you go, Trap Runner by Retro Guru and Night Owl Design. Superb game. Get ready. Okay, get ready. This is Trap Runner. On a beautiful Sunday afternoon, Jay is taking a trip with his lovely girlfriend, May, through the forest. While eating his favourite snack, a black strawberry cheesecake, he didn't realise the sky was getting dark. Heavy clouds weave over like a carpet in the sky. A strange creature appears with a brown cape and glowing pink eyes appearing behind them. After an evil laugh, follows a bright flash. The creature and May both disappear. Jay finds himself in the endless dark forest. You must save May. Jay begins his big adventure while thinking, if this was a computer game for the 80s, it'd be a very poor, unoriginal story. And it's a brilliant game, absolutely superb, it looks amazing, plays well, really, really good. I and mean, we love a bit of parallax. Your little character is very small, but doesn't have a lot of skills at the moment of time. You can kill enemies by jumping on their heads. And if you press it up at the right time, you can actually jump from enemy to enemy for additional points. Now you can also crash through some of the blocks, but only when they're very, very fragile blocks. Reach a treasure chest, and that is a checkpoint. Now you can pick up, pick up so many items in this game, so many coins, fruit, and all that sort of stuff. It's got a little bit of a Great Giannas look to it, in terms of these platforms, which you hit with your head, like we do in Great Giannas Sisters. Now there's also hidden platforms in the air. Blink and you miss it, but they are there. Now it only takes one hit to kill your character, but also pick up additional fruit with great sound effects. All we've got to try and do here is get to the end of the level. This is Greenland. There we go. Great artwork, looks really, really good. Up there is some fruit, but I'm going to take it nice and steady, get through this level successfully. No silly mistakes, because when he dies, he makes a really, really loud scream. And we don't want that. But great artwork, great ending, let's do the doorway. There you go, level complete, press fire button. Get ready. Okay, this is Greenland 2. Now each area is broken down into four stages. Half the levels can be completed by simply reaching the exit, while others require the player to pick up a certain quantity of gems, or certain quantity of puzzle pieces spread all over the place. Be prepared to evade all manner of traps along the way. For this one, all we've got to try and do is get to the end in the safest way possible. Now, you've heard of one-way streets? Of course you have. We've got one-way platforms. There we go. You have to go with the arrow. Don't forget the sharpest tool in the tool shed. You cannot go down a one-way street with the arrow pointing the other way round. You're going to fall down to your death. In this game, you can also pick up additional items, including coins. 10 points for a coin, 15 points for a piece of fruit, so don't be killed by them. We also have stars, 20 points for a star, collect 64 for additional life. Gems give you 40 points, and some levels you have to collect all of them. We also have extra lives and magic potions which fill up your ghost blocks with colour, as well as red or white pills that help you to progress through the game. Right, now again, there are some platforms that are very, very difficult to see, but sometimes they're quite easy to see, and some of them they really are difficult to see, but sometimes you need to use whatever's on them as a way of seeing them. There's a checkpoint. So of course, because there's diamonds in the sky, you know there's going to be a platform up there somewhere. Just don't fall off of the internet. But yeah, it's very, very difficult to see. It's very easy to miss. Miss your target to fall in the water. Believe it or not, your character cannot swim. But anyway, we've got a checkpoint, but we've got to try and kill these enemies, in this case, an enemy on a very, very narrow platform. Right, so avoid the spikes. And they can be killed by apples, but you can collect them. You can actually also go off the screen, and every time you do, an arrow will appear, so it gives you a little bit of an idea where your character is at the time. Score down the bottom right corner, lives down the bottom left corner, and any potions you picked up, at the moment is a big fat zero, is located in the top right corner. It's a really, really good looking game. Really good. Fantastic. Very colourful. Great artwork. Actually, a very, very big screen too, because your character is so small and then so is the enemy. I don't know if it has any boss battles, I'm not sure. I really have no idea. Now, down there, it's another secret. Go with the arrow. Now, sometimes it's quite difficult to get out of there, especially if there is 
water around. You hit your head, you're gonna fall in the water, and again, it's gonna be an instant kill. There you go, boo boo pow. I don't know how you get up there though. Oh, there's a more invisible platform. However, those ones you can just see. There's some dots. Not there all the time, but when they are, make the most. There you go. We're actually off the screen at the moment. There you go. Can we go any further? No, but that's it. It's done. Let's go and find the exit, which I know is just around here. But again, don't fall in the water. There we go. Superb. Level completed. Okay, final level of this part of the video. This is actually Desert Level 2. Now this one we've got to try and find a quantity of gems located at the top left corner of the screen, which is currently 31. Find the 31 gems and the door will be open to you. Now I do like it, it's a really good game. I love the way it looks, I love the way it plays. It's only got a few minor issues, but it's only minor. But sometimes it's difficult to tell what is background, what is foreground, what can kill you and what cannot. For example, those cactuses, now they don't kill you. But there's actually a similar one to that that will kill you. So again, it's able to tell what does and what doesn't. Also, enemies can also scroll around the screen and sometimes they'll go behind things in the foreground. So making that difficult to tell where they are. And all of a sudden you're moving along at your own pace and they pop out of nowhere and you kill. And because enemies are so small, some enemies are so small and they pop out the ground, it's very, very difficult to see them. And they just pop out again, just pop out of nowhere and hit you. I suppose just keep you on your toes, but you know, you've got spikes that come out the ground, sometimes you get fire, and later on this level, there's some sort of worm that pops out the ground, but again, you do not get a lot of reaction time. If you're running at speed, and all of a sudden, there he goes. But anyway, we're going to break these blocks, get another additional life, but yeah, avoid these enemies. You can kill them, but they don't respawn. Really At the moment of time, we've got four lives, and 23 gems to find. Make sure you do them in the right area, right order, that's what I meant to say. See enemies hiding behind the foreground, including a spike, and that's an enemy you cannot kill. There's a lot of Giannis' references, including those red bouncy balls. It's interesting because they did do a game called Giannis Return, which was not played before, including Fred's Journey, Fruity, Squat 1, 2, 3, and 4, Super Nutmeg, and of course the sequel to this, and Zoop. I love the animation when you're waiting around. But these you can kill, the ones with spiky tops you cannot. So he goes behind that cactus, but again, there's a similar cactus to that that will kill you. There's a checkpoint. Do this bit last, otherwise you get stuck. See, there is a worm that pops out the ground. Now, if you're running at speed, you wouldn't be expecting that. So it's an easy kill for the computer. Right, okay, watch out for spikes. Watch out for bats. It's another game that has bats as well as wasps. We've got to get all those gems. Now, some platforms will fall beneath you, and some will not. Again, enemies were hiding behind the foreground. But please, enemies don't respawn this one. Anyway, I'm not going to run over those blocks because they're going to fall apart. It's going to make it easy for a safe return. Deal with the enemies one at a time. Apart from the ones with spiky tops. Collect those. And we've still got 19 more gems to find. We've got two enemies on the screen. Both cannot be killed. But yeah, there's a lot of foreground around. And yes, it can be a big, big problem. Right, now we're going to have to kill this. Which is fine, it won't respawn. Okay. But yeah, it really is good, a good game. Brilliant. Superb. Right, and come back to that one. Jump over that. Don't break too many platforms. Again, make it a safe return. Okay. Still need 15 more gems. Right. No more over here. So we backtrack. Hopefully, we'll be alright in terms of gem quantities. Okay. Don't fall in the lava. Okay. So again, we still don't have any potions yet. Alright. Okay. Make our way back. But again, watch out for any fast-moving enemies that will pop out of nowhere. Including a saw. There's a few saws on here which are very fast-moving saws. Again, if you run at speed, it's easy to miss. There's one around here somewhere. Kill these, they're fine. Around here somewhere is a saw. You can also crouch as well. There you go. I see ya. There, 
is more pickups. This is Crouch. Can kill bats, but there's not a lot of room above him, so I've got to avoid it. Rather than biscuit for a biscuit. There is an enemy similar to the flump in Mario. And they're called flumps, that's the noise they make when they fall. There you go, Pippa Pal! Superb game! Trap Runner. Next game I bought on the Mega once again, bought it on the same day. This is Fred's Journey. The first time I played this was actually on the C64. Fred remembers his past journey, deciding to relive his adventures, he heads out again. Eat fruits to keep your health on level, collect all rubies to proceed further, and avoid touching your enemies. Fred is ready, are you? There you go. Okay, this game doesn't work. This they sent me don't work, so I have to get my own one. Well, unfortunately, this disc doesn't work, so I'm creating a new one. Trouble is, in the other room, I've got a really good box like this, full of some old floppy disks. And... They're dying. These disks are dying. But I think I found one at work, so I think this is okay. So, that should work. So, we'll fire it up. That's better! There you go. Cosmos Designs. There we go, much better. Copyright 2020, Cosmos Designs and Retro Guru. This is Fred's Journey. Okay, so the game, this is Fred's Adventure. No, Fred's Journey. <laughs> okay, so the game, this is Fred's Journey. Fred, a legendary CG4 persona. Fred's back, fondly remembers his past journeys, decides to relive his adventures and heads out again. At the start of the game, we have absolutely no weapons whatsoever. So, remember the time, it's the avoiding game. What we've got to do here is we've got to find all the rubies in the level. Once you find all of them, you'll know because Fred will go. That will tell you you've got them all. And you've got to find the exit because you can't fire at the moment of time to avoid everything. And there's a lot of enemies here, and enemies do keep you spawning a lot. Hit these blocks, and occasionally you'll find something good. So now we can fire. It's not going to fall over the screen, only a little bit. The more you get, the more it can improve. Now on this game, like Wonder Boy, we do have a vitality bar. Now on Wonder Boy, the vitality bar is quite a big bar. Here, it's just the length of your score. In fact, it's the red section of your score. So like Wonder Boy, you've got to keep it topped up by picking up food. And once it completely drains down, he'll feel very down in the dumps. And you can tell because not only did his sprite look very, very down in the dumps, he doesn't have a bit of an unhappy face to him, but of course he died. Now we start the game off with two lives. Already there are so many enemies here, but luckily they're in a place where it's not going to cause much concern. Right, so now we should be able to go the full length of the screen with bullets. And it takes two hits to kill the enemy. Now the first time I played this was actually on the CC4. That's a really, really good version as well. But this is good as well. Love the artwork, love the sound effects, love the music. And we love a bit of uh, Parallax, of course we do. But anyway, keep these enemies at bay. It can get very, very filled with enemies in a very short space of time. Now you can also break the blocks like that. Do what you can to get these rubies. Right, got more scissors to read on it. However, you don't want too many enemies in a small space. Let them out. Let them out, go for the kill, pick up the rubies. Now, on the CC4 version, it doesn't tell you how many you got fine. It doesn't do it here either. Wish it would, though. That'd make it a lot more easier. Because you don't want your vitality bar to drain when you don't know how many you got left to find. But anyway, keep it up right here. We spawn all the time. When you got bullets, it's fine. Without a whole new experience. Okay, on we go. I love the music. Pick up all the rubies to complete the level. Collect fruit to regain health. Collect drinks to restore full health. Bump boxes. Hit them with your head. Break them and you'll find shooting power-ups and bonus items. Right, okay. Keep the image at bay. But again, when they respawn, they are on the edges of the screen. So if there's a ruby there, you, you'll be careful. You don't want to hit an enemy that is on the screen at the wrong time. Right, more power-ups. I don't know how many it takes, but now we're firing much better bullets. Much bigger in size. Stronger bullets means it takes less hits to kill enemies. And there's a potion. That should replenish all your energy. Now this level, like the CG4 version, it does have bottles pits. Now on the CG4, I did struggle because it's difficult to tell where they are. Because some levels, like this one, you need to progress down screen. Don't you guess too far down, you'll fall right, right down and be getting some kill. But yes, do get two lives, and you can also pick up additional life along the way. If you know where they are, of course. 
But yes, this is two games blended into one. Now these sprites have taken quite a big change in their time. And over the time, enemies are doing what lemmings would do, just killing themselves by walking off edge platforms. So we're not going to follow suit. We're going to avoid the ball costs and do it sensibly and get all these rubies. Now, no time limit, but in a way, I suppose you probably do, because you do have a draining energy bar. But as long as you keep picking up food and drinks, we should be fine. There we go. On we go. <laughs> Now we have enemies of all shapes and sizes, not many as other games, but we have one called a Boom and a Shroom. Boom is a tree trunk, Shroom is a mushroom. You also get uh, Rockies that throw rocks at you, a bit like the ones in Bubble Bubble once again, and also get Hopper and Octo. Now Octo, again, is a similar enemy that appears in Wonder Boy, like an octopus, jumps out of the water. No water here. In fact, I've never seen water yet, even on CD4 didn't see it. Anyway, energy's good. But once you've picked up all the food, and of course you've got nothing to replenish your energy with. So, we're going to progress to the side post. There we go, we've got three lives. I didn't even notice. You earn lives through score. That's a bonus. This is a really good game. This is really, really good. Great fun. Right, okay. Now, I think this is the level I didn't get past on the season four. Keep the shrooms, keep the booms on the wraps. Yes, this is the one. I remember it well. Yes, this one I got a little bit lost. You don't get lost when you've got a draining vitality bar. There's the exit, very, very high up. So it helps you know your way around. Okay. Yeah, that bit down there, yeah, I kept making, making a mistake on that. So fall down, but keep going right. In situations like that, you don't want to be losing your weapon. It's going to be difficult to jump over. In a narrow space like that. Alright. Three lives. Should be fine. Again, still not seen many enemies. Just booms and shrooms at the moment. Alright. Oh my lord, right, we'll get up there. That's a okay. Right, okay, we got a serious pixel perfect jumping situation here. No, that is a difficult jump. What we need is a big, big jump. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a big, big jump. So, yeah. How much pixelation perfect we can do here? This is proving to be quite tricky. I can't... That is a difficult jump. You've really got to be pixel perfect there. Right, okay, we're here again, and I'm going to try it again. I've got six lives, and I have the best weapon. But, that jump completely killed me last time. So all my lives away. So all my weapons away, because I kept dying. I couldn't make that jump. Oh, I know I made it that time. <laughs> Blimey! Let's get out of here! No, where's the exit? This signpost can take you anywhere. Oh, okay. Have you got a jump from that platform? Oh, I don't believe it. Right, so the ending is up there, so I've got to make that jump for a second time, and then jump from there to the exit. So the exit is actually in the air. Do it again. I can't believe it. Ugh. Jump from there. There you go. Wow. I'm sure I tried that last time. Right. I'm stuck. I'm actually stuck here. So I can't make that jump. I'm really struggling. I can't. <coughs> I can't make that jump. Right. I can't make that jump. I absolutely cannot make that jump. Right, lives are fading, weapons are downgrading. This section, I don't know how to get those rubies, but you cannot jump there. No, I can't get up there. Hmm, No, I can't. Hmm. Right, weapons, nothing. Lives, hardly anything at all. Right, again, I'm stuck. I can't get past this bit. Don't know how you do it. Ah, 
Ah, did it? What did I do there? I did exactly the same as just now. Oh, but I've got no weapons though. Right, okay. Alright, well, that was costly. Really costly. Um, no weapons. Well, it's certainly going to spice this video up a little bit. Yeah. You don't want to lose weapons in a game like this. There's so many enemies like this. There we go. Not confidently done, though. Okay, we've got a new enemy. This one is called Popper. Why is he called Popper? He does exactly what he says on the tin. He hops around. Anyway, I'm not firing very much, but it's better than nothing. And we've got another new enemy. We have Octo. There you go. Brilliant. I'm firing more often. Can you kill Octo? I believe so. Oh, ooh, ah, my lord. That was mean. Alright, oh, okay, it's not. Oh. My lord. Oh, you see, you don't get a warning. You don't get a warning. If you kill them, do you? Yes, they do. Oh, my lord. That's difficult. Alright, okay, there we go. Superb game. That is. Journey. Next game I bought, again it's on the Amiga, again it's fairly new, this is Rotator, and I have played this once before on my stream. Take control of your Rotator craft and carefully manoeuvre it through the varied challenging landscapes, collecting diamonds while trying to stay above the ever rising flood level. Mastery of the controls is essential if you are to succeed. There we go. There we go, Rotator, and I had to do this once before, that was before I bought the Silver Box version, a Midnight Banana production. Tough game, but good fun. The TV's going to turn itself off, which you can't see, and I can. Right. Okay, so the game is Rotator, superb game but challenging. The rules are simple though, you've got to find all the diamonds, finds all the diamonds and opens up the exit. But getting to the exit is a difficult task, but there we go, it's short and sweet. Level 2 is the key to success. So, we've got to open the door with one key that is available to us. You only hold one key at a time, but one key is enough. Open the door, collect the diamonds, and then make a way to the exit. Now, you've got to get the correct bounce. Absolutely so. Once you get the correct bounce, you go for the correct angle by pressing left or right at the right time. Good pal, have some of that. Okay, level 3 is spring into action. Now we've got to find four diamonds. There's two straight away. You've got to use these springs to get to high grounds. Now when you want to stop your spacecraft, you press down and that will stop it spinning. You don't want to go too crazy because it will go absolutely insane. But anyway, we have the diamonds, we have the exit. Superb. Next level is called Don't Get Blown Away. Now we have these fans. Sometimes they're mounted on the walls, sometimes they're mounted on the floor. In this case, they're on the wall. But we've got to use them to our advantage. A decent spin, keep it under control, press down to stop it in its tracks. We'll go up there and pick up some more diamonds. Bingo! That was good. That was brilliant. So now we'll go to the exit. Which sometimes can be difficult. Next level is called I Get the Point. Touch the spikes and it drains your energy, but we do get shield. So use that to your advantage. Next level is Breakthrough, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're breaking through the platform. It doesn't take much effort to break through it, but it's enough. Now, on this one, we have water. It's not the cleanest of water, but it's water nevertheless. Now, this water will rise, rise all the time. Now, if you go into the water, it's not an instant kill, but a timer will appear above your head. And if you're still in the water, Three, when it reaches two, zero, one. you're going to die. But pick up the timer, and it will stop the Excellent. water rising for a short period of time. Not for long, but hopefully enough to get a reasonable amount of distance done, get to a safe distance before it starts to rise again. Anyway, we've got the diamonds, all we've got to try and do now is get up there, which is never an easy task, especially when you've got water rising. But at the moment, it's fairly slow, fairly stable, and we are okay. Boop boop pow. <clears throat> Next level is called a slippery character. Now this one, we have a force field, which you cannot go through unless you have the right weapon to do so. At the moment, we don't, but up there is two shields. So I'm going to grab the shields, go through the force field, deactivate the force field, grab the key, open the door, grab the nine diamonds, and go home. 
which is the most difficult bit. But anyway, the shield does wear off, but it's fine. There's no dangers now. So all we've got to try and do now is get a good spin, good height, and go for it. Right, stop spinning, stop spinning, stop, 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 stop. Right, okay, so, go to the edge. Bingo! There we go. Right, okay. It's a brilliant game. It does need, desperately, music. In-game music is what it desperately needs. The game has got a little bit of a psychosis look to it. Blimey, that was difficult. There we go. Okay, next level is called Onwards and Upwards. At the moment of the time, the water's not going anywhere. It's frozen to the spot because I picked up a time. We use this time wisely. Go up there. Right, more springs. Once this thing starts to spin out of control, it's difficult to stop it. Right, go for it. Right up there. But that water will stop for a little bit of time and it will start going again. So at the moment, it's going to be rising. There we go. Right, there's one. There's two. Keep going, you can bounce through the platform, that's not a problem. Okay, now that water's going to do some serious rising to affect me up here. But anyway. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, superb. Keep nice and steady once again. Just bounce, just spin. Two, bingo! Lovely, lovely, lovely jubbly. Okay, this one's called Choices Choices. We have one square key, two square keyholes. Open the door on the left, pick up the triangle key. One triangle key, two triangle key locks. Again, open the right lock. Okay, get a decent bounce. Okay, keep it there. Right. Now we bounce over to the other side. Keep it under control, hit the switch. Make our way there and pick up the circle key. But watch out for rising water. Okay. Now we go up and do another choice. Make another choice. We have one circle key, two circle key locks. Keep it under control. Whoa, control yourself. Right. Okay, we have to open the one on the right, not the left. Left will take us to things we don't want. We want those four diamonds. Okay, right. Ugh. Right, now we pick up the diamonds. Which is no easy task. Right, okay, we have one, two, three, four. Okay. Nice and steady. Maintain the bounce. Maintain the height. Get up there. Pick up any apples along the way for additional points. There we go. Not yet. There you go. Boom pow. Okay. Last level for this part of the video. This one's called Welcome to the Castle. Lots of diamonds. Lots of hazards. Lots of bouncing. Right. This one has spikes and also water. Okay, we'll be in the right place. Okay, we took some damage, but should be okay. Now we've got to get out of there and get that timer on the right side. Stop the water. Okay, not professionally done. I'll take that. Stop bouncing. Right, okay. Up there is three more. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, get to the edge. Bounce, 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 bounce. Right, we're not done yet. What we'll do now is get up there. Get onto the edge. Onto the edge. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Go. Go, go, go. Right, okay, we're still not done yet. 
Bounce back, bounce, but the water is a long way away until it's going to start catching up with me. Okay, two more. And there's the exit. Great artwork, really good. Right, okay. Here we go. Sport bounce is all we need. There you go, superb. There you go, brilliant game, rotator. That's more than our footage. This game I bought on Amiga is Rick Dangerous. This is my second most expensive game I bought in 2020. This cost me £100. However, it's mint. Rick Dangerous, superhero and part-time stamp collector, is in dire peril. Armed with trusty six-shooter, a stick and some dynamite, Rick crash lands somewhere in South America and he forgot to refuel his aircraft. Rick Dangerous is a new cult game. It's totally addictive, pure fun, Rick well, Rick is dangerous. And it's difficult. There we go. There we go, Rick Dangerous, superb game by Core Design. However, difficult, really, really difficult game, but good fun. Okay, so the game is Rick Dangerous, a platform game developed by Core Design for the Acorn Archimedes, Amiga, Atari ST, Amstel CPC, ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, and MS-DOS based PCs. The game was released in 1989 and published by Rainbow Software in Europe and the rest of the world, and on the Microplay label in America. Later, it was released with two other games, Stunt Card Racer and Micropro Soccer on the Commodore 64 PowerPlay C64 cartridge. The game was followed by a sequel called Rick Dangerous 2 in 1990. Loosely based on the Indiana Jones film franchise, the game received mixed reviews from critics. And it's absolutely brilliant. I love this game, but it is so difficult. There's so many traps in this game, even at its early stages. More traps than the game of Mousetrap. But yeah, it's difficult. But it does have a few flaws, not bad ones, but I don't particularly like the scrolling in this game, especially when you're falling, but also you do have limited bullets and limited ammunition. So you'll try and save them, of course, along the way. Now to use a bullet, you hold the fire button down and press up. And to use an explosive, you hold the fire button down and press down. But you don't want to shoot the boxes that contain them because that will explode. But you want to try and save as many as you can. And what I tend to do is, I tend to save bullets by trying to kill as many enemies with explosives. You're going to need more bullets than explosives in this game. Now this is a very difficult level. And I have never got past it without dying. But again, it's one of those games you must try and master by playing it loads and loads of times. Remember where all the traps are. Now sometimes you've got to use your explosives for other ways, not just by killing enemies, you've got to try and make it an easy journey for you by clearing the area, like these rocks. Now you cannot touch those rocks, it'd be an instant kill. Now you can pick up these collectibles, I believe it's 500 points for each, which you don't have to get, but if you want to get a good score, then I'm going to go for it. But I'm not going to go for high score skaters on this one, I'm going for a, trying to a completion of this first level without dying, which I've never done before. But anyway, enemies won't fire at you, but they do move backwards and forwards, and some of them do home in on you. So if you're trying to jump over them because you don't have any bullets, yes, they'll change direction, that'll kill you. But anyway, I'm saving bullets. Now sometimes it's difficult to jump, especially when there's more than one enemy nearby, and the moment there is. So, two shots is required there. Now there's so many things that can kill you, apart from spikes. We have these spears that get shot from the walls. Now what makes it difficult is sometimes they'll fire, and sometimes they don't, so it's difficult trying to remember what ones fire, what ones don't. And they do fire at a very, very fast speed. But anyway, you can also run, crouch, and climb. And he has a good jump as well. At the moment we're getting rid of spikes, which is good, it's nice to get rid of them. Retro games have too many spikes. Right, so we've got six lives. Again, I'm going to try and avoid as many as I can by saving... Well, jumping over them to save bullets, what I meant to say. But yes, you don't want to get to a section where you have no bullets. Believe it or not. Right, okay, so, whenever you can, if it's possible, jump them or use explosives. Now some of these will shoot you when you're close to the area. Some of them will shoot you when you're away from the area, but sometimes it's very, very difficult to tell when they're going to fire. So sometimes you just sort of poke your head up just to make sure. And then if it shoots, retreat. Uh, but sometimes you get a choice. It could be a ladder or some ledges. Now, it's a 50-50 shout. Because it could be a ladder which has a trap or a ledge that has a trap. So again, you need to play it a lot to remember where they all are. Where the hazards are. Anyway, there are some areas that are difficult than others. There are a choice of routes. But yes, risk it if you so wish to. Right, we've run out of bullets, but it's fine. We have a repaired box. So that's good. We have four, which is six. Now you've got to try and blast your way through. But don't get killed by the blast or get killed by the block. Sometimes I go left, sometimes I go right. Right, at the moment of time, my dynamite is extremely low supply. So, 
Crouch whenever you can. You never know what's going to fire. Right, that is now full, and so is my bullets. And life is good as well. Right, okay, take it nice and steady. Oh, my lord, don't die there, Jamie. Don't die there. Don't die anywhere. Right. Score, 7,170. Okay, checkpoint. Every time you enter another room, it is a checkpoint. Right, again, don't have your head shot off. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice touch to this game, but it's always been a difficult game, this one. So early on in the game, right from the go, it's difficult. Which is why I've never actually completed any of the Rick Dangerous games. Right, we take a diagonal climb. Right, again. Crouch whenever you can, it's a lot safer than running. Okay, save bullets whenever you can, if you can, if it's doable. Especially if you're in a narrow passageway, you don't have no ammunition. Okay. But yeah, there's not many levels, there really isn't. Right, um, we need... Oh my lord. More bullets. Yeah, you got to crouch really quickly. Even though your character is smiling, he might be smiling when he gets hit in the head with a, a spear. Okay. Right, it's not an overly long level, but... I've never done it without dying. So far, so good. Just don't jinx it. Right, and I can't remember how old I was when I first played this game. But I wasn't very good in the old days. Right, this is a difficult section. I've always struggled with that. There we go. This has so many spikes that just pop out the wall. So again, you've got to learn, remember, where they all are. I've got double spears. Right, again, so if you're in there with no bullets, you ain't gonna jump over him anytime soon. So use explosives wherever you can. Right. Uh try to remember now. Uh I don't know what's down below. Could be spikes, could be traps. More than likely in a game like this. See, there you go. Totally forgot about that one. Right, so my my objective has gone out the window. Right, okay. Well, we'll go for one death, if we can do it. I'll try. But again, I totally forgot about that one. So, now we know it's there. Now we know what to avoid. We don't want to do the same thing again. So, we jump from there to there. Or do we? I can't remember now. It's there, isn't it? Um, right, so... Jump. Jump. Right, okay. And the old, old days, that really did make me jump. It really did. It, it, it takes a lot to make me jump. I have to admit, it does. Now, there is also a trap. I believe spikes will pop out that enemy's head. Even though it's not technically an enemy, it's a stone or a statue. Right. Okay. Again, keep low. Right, we're not far away. This is actually the ending section, but make sure you blow this section up first. Now, that was quite frustrating because I was actually quite close to doing my achievement. There we go, that's the end of the first level. There we go, Rick Dangerous. Okay, level two is the pyramids. So, I've never actually got past this one before. Never ever. Even the old, old days, I never got past it. And again, it's a level which I don't know where all the spikes are. Now, being in a place like this, you can expect spikes everywhere. It, 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 it's guaranteed. Right, so, when you get a choice of ladders, you know one's going to be good and one is going to be bad. There we go, it's confirmed. Okay, so we're here again. So now I know which is bad, which is good. However, I, I found it out in a way I didn't particularly want to find out. But there we go. Again, we've got enemies that aren't firing, which is good. If you can avoid it, uh, then do it. Uh. Right, there we go. Do lots of comical deaths in this game. Right. Again, spears get shot out of many, many things. And again, it's difficult because... Yeah, you just don't know where they... Right, there is a trap as well. Right there. Right there. Um... Oh, it's there as well. My lord, you see. Okay, I'm here again. Again, a few silly deaths. But I've got two lives. i got five sticks of dynamite and five bullets. Right, let's try and get past this mystery bit. Now, the spears will actually kill the enemies as well. Right, so that takes care of him. Right. Uh, can you stand on that platform? Ah! Right, that is challenging. Okay. 
Okay, right, so we're safe to go. We're clear to go. Again, I don't remember where spikes are, but I guarantee in a place like this, there's going to be many, isn't there? Right, now, it's got to go left. It can't go right. There we go, it took care of him. So, we need to try and save bullets. He'll sh drop down. When he does, he get the shock of his life, if he does come down here anyway. No, he hasn't. Right, okay, just wasted two explosives there. Right, okay, never mind. Never mind. And up there, looks like the Ark from Rage of the Lost Ark. However, I'm not going to be opening that today. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, again, it's, everything is a bit of a blur, I have to admit. Now, I'm hoping that platform is going to fall at some point. It should do. It could do. Is it? It does. Right. Oh, don't believe it. Okay, I'm here again. A few silly deaths, which is why I've only got three again. But anyway, try and remember where the traps are. Now, that will fall. And it's not on the ground for very long. There you go. Right, shoot him, deal with him. Right. Now, nine times out of ten, if it looks straightforward, it probably isn't. It probably means there's a spike nearby, and here there is. Jump from there to there to avoid getting spiked. Right, so now we've got a guy doing the Egyptian dance. However, not for much longer. Right, I'm out of bullets. It's not a good thing. Um, right, there is another spike. Trouble is, I don't have any bullets. However, I don't think I need them here because I think that's going to be shot. So we need to crouch. Right, if it was him, we need some serious bullets. Um, right, now it's a blur. Now here, yes, it's looking likely there's going to be a spike on this left hand side. Because it's the simpler option. So... Or you do that. Okay. Maybe not. Okay, another Raiders of Lost Ark arc. Right, okay. Ooh, okay. I've got a funny feeling something's going to shoot me, something's going to stab me. Right. Now I've noticed on this game you don't get as many secret areas as you would have done in Rick Dangerous 2. Right, I don't want to waste three bullets here. Trying to do some multi-kills. Well, I wasn't expecting that. This game I bought on the Amiga came out in the year 2020. This is Wiz, and it's a very, very small case. Enter the realms of magic and lead Wiz, the last elder wizard, on a quest to find the magic lantern. Use your trusty book of magic and spell potions. You must traverse many hazardous paths to finally restore light to where dark magic has prevailed. There you go. There you go, Wiz. Quest for the Magic Lantern. Copyright, Mutation Software and Software Amusement. All rights reserved. Okay, so the game is Wiz by Mutation Software. You play as Wiz the Wizard on a quest to retrieve the magical lantern which contains bright magical fairy lights that keeps the evil spirits at bay across all the lands. It was stolen by the Wartnose Witch and taken to the spooky mansion which resides in darkness. Wiz picks up the remainder of his trusty old spells and potions to embark on the quest. I have to admit, I've not played many games with Mutation Software, but it's pretty good. Music's okay. But anyway, what I don't like about it is enemies take so many hits to be killed. So many, it's unbelievable. There's a lot of backtracking in order here. Now, at the bottom of the screen, we have our status panel, which contains our lives and our energy. We have two lives and our energy. Now, if you do lose energy, you can replenish lost energy by picking up food. And you also pick up coins. And it also contains all of our spells. At the moment, there's not a lot in them. It's not completely empty. You'll know if it is, it will say so underneath it. Now, select a potion, you have to press down. And once you've selected it, let go of it and you'll activate it. But again, they're all going to be limited in a game like this. But you can pick up potions along the way. But yes, enemies take a lot of hits, but you can jump on their heads. There's one potion and there's food. Right, there we go. Right, so let's go over the status panel. We also have the magical wand. This is the most basic magical item to shoot monsters with. You can also jump on monsters to inflict damage to your foes. Also have the Fairy Potion, causes a protected fairy to appear and float around Wiz and acts as a shield against foes, but not all monsters, including fish. You can't kill fish in this game. 
But they are deadly, they are evil. Anyway, I'm going to try and save these potions for when I need them the most. For the amount of time, we're just going to take it nice and steady. We also have the heal potion, restores Wiz to full health, which is very, very handy. And that is the green one. Right, your character also cannot crouch. Right, I want a lily pad. Right, exit, there we go. Okay, we're still on Act 1. We also have the Bubble Potion. A bubble appears that can carry Wiz across otherwise unreachable platforms and float across dangerous areas. Which I haven't seen yet. I have to admit, at these early stages, you don't really need that one. But it's handy anyway. But anyway, we'll try and get up there. Um, so we need to use a... Okay, you can jump up there. It's fine. I love the animation to your character as well. Right, over there is a coin. And up there... Is more coins down here is something I think it's food I'm not sure anyway energy is replenished right we also get the freeze potion when used this powerful potion can freeze all monsters movement for a limited time including boss battles now you get the boss at the end of the third stage of each act I think that's right right some enemies are very, very small so again no crouching makes it difficult to kill them so pick up the coin um, right so what else do we have we can ride a dinosaur or dragon. And you can just run into the enemy and it kills them. The only thing again that you can't kill is a fish. In fact, it actually harms you. So yeah, everything else just run into it. Everything else avoid all costs. There we go. Great artwork. So hit one stage at a time. There we go. Now you can get off it whenever you want to by pressing up. Use it to get additional potions. Right, and coins. Right, we also have the Fire Potion, probably the most powerful potion of all when used. Magical fireballs rain down from heaven, causing an earthquake, and destroys anything that it touches. Which is the red one. Okay, at the moment we're just running into him, which is fantastic, but now we must dismount. There we go, press up. Right, okay, so we're going to take it one stage at a time. We're going to get through one act for this part of the video. But yeah, I love it, it's really good. We also get the occasional one up thrown into the mix. Now, enemies do take a lot of hits, but yes, ones with spiky areas, yes, the only way to kill them is by using a potion or by shooting at a distance. Can't jump on spiky enemies. Right, okay, but yeah, you don't die by falling from a big distance. Right, jump over the door and pick up a coin. There we go, boom, pow. Right, the final level until the boss. Okay, so again, jump over here and you cannot crouch. But yes, some enemies die if you jump on their heads with two bounces and some with three. But some enemies, you jump on them and you can also take damage yourself. So I do think keeping a distance and shooting repeatedly with your magic wand is the way to go. Right, more fish. And they're deadly. They always are. But in this one, you cannot kill them. So we'll jump on the lily pads, which you couldn't really see, but it was there. Right. Okay, so just shoot and retreat. Shoot and retreat. Go. Right, I don't know if you earn additional life through score. Possibly. I don't know, really. But in the option screen, you can actually increase how many life you start with. So, of course, there's an easy, medium sort of setting sort of situation going on there. So, I've just gone for the basics. I'm going to take a big leap of faith and hope for the best. The snail. It might be slow, but it takes a lot of hits. And the snails take three jumps to kill those. Right, we need to activate some of these potions. Now, yes, the fish cannot be killed, and it cannot be protected for the fish with your shield. Everything else you can. Okay, right. I'm going to use some of these potions for the boss, which is not too far away. Right, I'm going to try... Let's get a shoot. There you go, this is the fairy. So that protects you from everything apart from things that can't be killed. There we go, we've got the freeze. Go in the door. Okay, boss battle. It is a mushroom. Right, so I'm going to try and use a weapon. Uh, let's make sure we pick the right one. I'm going for a freeze. Now you've got to try and hit him in the crown. At the moment of time, I can't quite reach it. So, not good. But anyway, we're going to try and use the fire. Hit him that way. Again, great artwork. Superb. Definitely hit him that time. Hit him in pain. Right, okay, shoot the crown. There you go, boom and pow! Have some of that! <laughs> Superb! Whiz! Okay, this is the unholy graveyard. Right, okay, lots of enemies here, and again, takes so many hits. Frankenstein monster takes four bounces. Pumpkins take three, I believe. 
One, two, three, four. Say no more. Okay, no worries at all. Now, enemies do also fire at you, including Frankenstein's monster. Now, if you go on this right-hand section, you'll find some secrets. Now, because this guy homes in on you, you just do that. Just stay in one place, keep bouncing repeated on his brain. And that will do it. Over here is additional skills. And additional enemies. But yeah, we'll do it again. Work before, we'll do it again. Um... Now, on this level, you have to go underground. Go in some sort of mine shaft. But it's good that enemies do not respawn this game. But anyway, at the moment of time, we've got potions. Even though they have a very short supply, it's better than nothing. Right, so we've got to try and jump onto the moving platforms. Okay, so now we go for the door. Again, it's secret areas. Now, there's a section where you've got to try and use the... Ugh, you've got to use the trams. Now, what I tend to do is I use the fairy potion because you get so many spooky ghosts and if you're moving along a moving platform and you don't get a lot of time to react to an enemy that takes somebody hits the kill it's best to use a potion so i think the fairy potion is the way to go right so we're going to use it here activate it superb we're we'll protected from everything and every time it hits them we should get additional points now it does last quite some time you do get a warning it will start to flash there you go, we've got a few kills out of that one. There you go, boop pow I like that. Well, there we go. Keep going. One, two, three, and four in the door. Okay. Okay, up there is a extra life. Now, I cannot jump there. It's beyond my jumping skills. So, we're going to use a bubble. So, we float over there. boop pow That's about that. Doesn't last very long. However, you can early if you press the fire button. Yes. Anyway, we have two lives. Uh, and energy is okay as well. Okay, second boss. I've never seen this one before, but apparently it flies. Oh, okay, it's confirmed. Right, I'm gonna hit everything I've got. You get a shock of its life. Mind you, it wasn't on the screen, but it's very, very fast moving. Right, okay. Let's do that again. Have some of that. Is that hurting him? I don't know. Possibly. I do have quite a lot of those. Okay, we'll get him in the right situations. Well, I didn't know a lot about that, but there we go. Success. Bingo. There we go. Superb game. What have we got now? Next game I bought on the CC4 this time. This is Solus. Came out in the year 2012. Now, this has got really difficult text. It's difficult to read. Isaac, a powerful warrior king, grew tired of constant war. He declared a time of peace that was betrayed by his generals. A curse was placed on him, transforming him into a gruesome beast, and he was cast to a tomb of all time. One thousand years later, a great quake shattered the wall of the tomb. Ryzak can now escape and reclaim his soul and take his rightful place as king once more. His fate is in your hands. There you go. <laughs> There we go, on to the CT4 this time, with another fairly newish game, Soulless. Okay, this is Soulless. The object of the game is to collect 12 spirit stones and place them in the correct order in the soul chamber. To do this, you must search the temple and search objects in each of the screens. There are clues to the correct order scattered around the temple to keep note of those. Right, not bad little game. However, we don't have any weapons here, not a single one. Now, we do this by finding items in objects. At the moment of time, we just run, jump and crouch, but we can search like you do in possible mission by going up to an item and holding up the search. Once you search it to a 100% way, it will disappear off the face of the earth. Some objects have items and some do not. Some you can use against enemies and some you cannot. But at the moment of time, all we can do is just avoid everything, because there's nothing to search around here. But there are enemies to avoid around here. So because you can't fire against them, all we do is jump over them. But it's not an instant kill situation, you have three lives, we can take multiple hits before you die. We can replenish your health along the way in two certain ways. One, picking up a potion, and two, by using a spawn point, which we'll talk about later on today. But there's no time limit, which is fantastic. Right, so not a single point on the uh, on the board at the moment. So anyway, enemies come in all different shapes and sizes, but they all must be avoided at all costs. So there we go. But yes, it's a very, very impossible mission, and a little bit of a hint of a Shadow of the Beast look to it. In terms of your character, anyway. But anyway, this thing homes on you, but luckily he does do it very slowly. Right, finally we got objects. So we press up to search. We found blue magic, which freezes enemies on the screen. We found a big ruby that is points. 
Okay, move Isaac using the joystick in port 2. Fire to jump and down to crouch and to activate spawn points. Push up to search an object and spawn points also heals your character. And it also is a checkpoint as well. Right, one minute there was no objects, now they're all over the place. We've got to try and search them, but don't be hit by enemy while doing it. It's difficult because some enemies are located in very, very narrow sections. So yes, you can't really jump over them as easy as you do in other sections. So, yeah, don't hit your head on the ceiling. Found some gold. Gold is points, same as rubies. At the moment of time, I don't have a high score. Big ruby. Okay. Yes, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's nothing there whatsoever, but it will disappear. We've got to try and search everything. Some enemies do move faster than others, but you can sort of go off the screen and return to it and do it like that, if you so wish. And it should carry on where it left off. There we go, big ruby. Right, you can also get red magic, destroys all enemies on screen. Green magic, slows enemies on screen. Blue magic freezes all enemies on screen, and the potion heals your character, and a stone amulet gives you temporary invincibility. But all weapons are limited, apart from the red magic that kills enemies on screen. The trouble is, when you go back to that screen, they'll all respawn. Right, let me shot. Now, a small item like that doesn't take a lot of searching. It was awarded for some gold. There we go, boom, boom, power. Everything's blown up off the screen. Okay. It's the best one, I feel, but again, if I go back down there, they're all back in play. I just found a spirit stone. I very nearly lost my head there. Right, okay. Red magic. Boo -boo pow Superb. Right, search these. Nothing to um, get in my way now. Big ruby. But yes, falling for a big distance won't kill your character. Oh, my lord, they're back in play. Not only there, but here as well. Okay. Once you've picked up an item, it will use that weapon immediately. So yeah, if it's a red, blue, green, whatever it is, as soon as you find it, it activates it immediately. There we go. Found a spirit stone. Superb. Now also, this game does also have keys. Coloured keys. So, let me just... Quite as bold with the Christmas tree. Blue key opens a blue door. Red key opens a red door, etc, etc. At the moment of time, we haven't found one yet. But then I haven't found any doors that are locked yet. Found a big ruby. Found some gold. Big ruby. Big ruby. <laughs> so many rubies, so many pieces of gold just lying around just waiting to be picked up. Yeah, I love the artwork. The character does look a little bit like a Shadow of the Beast sort of character. A little bit. But it doesn't punch like a Shadow of the Beast character. Right, big ruby. Yes, enemies. All different shapes and sizes and different speeds. Some are very, very slow, but some do home in on you. Right, this one's firing at me, so I'm hit by that. You can heal your character, but also once you find those spawn points, not only is it a save section, it's a checkpoint, it also fills up your energy bar. Right, big ruby. There's got to be something good around here. Big ruby. Oh my God, shot in the shins. Blue magic. Right, that freezes them. Hopefully long enough to get this done. But anyway, we've got additional life as well, but pow! Right, quickly it's gonna wear off. Again, like it would do in a possible mission. You don't get a warning. It happens immediately. Alright. Found some gold. Put it through the fire, and we shot in the kneecaps. Green magic. Green magic is slows down the enemies. Not only does it slow down them, it slows to them their bullets. But only on that screen. Okay, we haven't found a key yet. Right, this is a very, very slow enemy, but it's huge. But it does move slowly. Again, you can deal with it with a weapon. Okay. Well, I assume you can. You can definitely slow it down. I don't know if you can kill it, but I don't know. I'll just find out if I find one. If I find one, what we throws it to the spot. The problem I've got here is it's frozen the point where it's not going to allow me to progress further. So, I might be able to get one. So, I'm try and bring him down to this bottom right section. Okay, a bit of editing there because that is a very, very slow moving enemy. Right, okay, hopefully now he's far away and we can get all these things searched. Luckily, most of them are quite small. So it shouldn't need a lot of search. It's mostly rubies and gold. 
So now we need to go back round and take a leap of faith. Which is fine because it doesn't die by taking a leap of faith. In other games, yes, of course it would. Be an instant kill situation, but not here. Right, found some gold. Okay. Found nothing. Still not found a single key. Alright, what's that? Potion? That's a health potion. That's gold. Okay, we have our first locked door. So we've got to try and find a blue key. So I'll come back here later on today. Okay, we have found the blue key. And we just found some gold. Okay, we found a big ruby. A stone amulet, which makes me invincible. And red magic, it kills everything on the screen. What a, what a screen that was. That's a fantastic screen. However, if I go off the screen and go back into it, enemies will stay gone. But, we're going to go around this way, because there is a really, really fast enemy on that top section. Some sort of snake. So, we've got to try and find that door again. Let's hope to remember where it is. There you go, have some of that. Door is open. Superb. Found some gold. Red magic, there's nothing to use it on here. But anyway, we've got some more gold as well. Whoa, okay. Just keep going backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. What a crazy character he is. Okay. Jump, avoid, and search. Jump, avoid, and search. And don't get crushed by a stone. I was crushed by a stone. Found some gold. Do you know what? I don't think I'm too far away from finishing this. Whoa, finish this game. I've just picked up a green key. Used it. Picked up a yellow key. Go, used it. And I've been picking up so many items. So, surely, I reckon I've got enough by now. So, this is a case of finding the final room for this game. I don't think I'll be too far away, because I've, I've picked up so many items, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, I might actually get a completion here. Okay, I've arrived at the Soul Chamber, I've done so much backtracking, but now I've got the 12 Spirit Stones and the combinations. All I'm going to do now is put them in order. Pow! Superb! Did it kill me? No. <laughs> Far to continue. Loading.
today's list is on the Xbox One this time. This is Streets of Rage 4. I bought it quite some time ago, still not played it. 26 years later, the legendary series Streets of Rage is finally back with a brand new episode with lush hand drawn animations, new combat abilities, and fresh tracks from an amazing team of composers. Streets of Rage 4 is a masterful return of the classic action series that fans adore. There you go. There we go, Streets of Rage 4 came out in the year 2020. It's gonna be good. Okay, so the game is Street of Rage 4, playing for the absolute first time. Street of Rage 4 is a beat em up game developed by Dot Emu, Lizard Cube, and Guard Crush Games. It's a continuation of Sega's Street of Rage series. Released in 2020 for Windows, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Mac OS, and Linux. It received generally positive reviews from critics and sold over 1.5 million copies worldwide. And I can see why. What a game! This is absolutely outstanding. Plays so well, looks so good, all these were hand drawn. What an achievement. Now I love the fact they've pretty much kept it like it has been in the old games. The characters are the same, the moves are the same. Of course, gonna be a few additions thrown in. And the special moves are pretty much the same, and the weapons. But yeah, it's brilliant. I mean break these items, you get anything from money to food. Food even plenishes lost energy. An apple will place a little bit. A piece of chicken will place all of it. Now we're playing as Axel. And you have three lives. You do earn additional lives from score. Now you do also have special moves like we've done in your the old game. And some of them do drain your energy. But also you do get another special attack, which is that star at the top of the screen, which you activate by pressing B and yellow down at the same time. At the moment of time, we're okay. We will use it when we get bombarded with lots and lots of enemies. In a game like this, it can change very, very quickly, of course. Of course, there's so much I have probably haven't seen this game. There's probably so much I'm not aware of in this game. Do I know all the moves? Probably not. I've not read the instruction book yet. But we do get so many combos. Pick up so many weapons. Anything from a knife to a lead pipe in, but there's probably going to be a lot more than that. Right, combos. Enemies are pretty much the same with a few more thrown in. And they all have names, like we've done in the old gold games. Anyway, I do have Street Race 2 as a box version in my collection. I have played the first and third. I don't own them as box versions, but the third game goes for an absolute lot of money. But this is brilliant. She's superb, but you have to admit, Street of Rage 2 was always my favourite. Now, of course, in the old, old days, I didn't own a Mega Drive, but a lot of my friends at school did. So, quite a lot of time, I went in their houses and played Street of Rage 2 or 1 down there. Brilliant times. Anyway, let's go. I do have a Mega Drive now. Superb. Right, okay. Okay, it's very dark. This is a really, really dark street. Might as well bin there, smash it, and get some money. Apple? Why not? Right, extra life of 5,000 just saw there. Okay, right, lead pipe in, apple check. How about that? Love the sound effects. You also attack in the air. Brilliant. Special move? Why not? Have some of that. 29 hits. They can pick up more though when you pick up a gold star. Of course, that is a good move as well, but that does drain your energy. You can replenish it when you attack and defeat enemies. Okay, we've got a lead piping. No time limit. That is a surprise. So is that. Nice touch. Okay, 18 hits. Get in the corner and attack multiple with one hit. Super! 244 damage. Oh, what a game. This is so good. And of course, this is online as well. At the moment of time, Billy Lone Mates is playing on his own here. Alright, we've got three lives. Score 5608. Brilliant, have some of that. Lots of moves in the air. Attack with your knees, attack with your feet. Good move. Always like that one. Might break the barrel, what have we got? It's a chicken! Right. Not a boss battle! The user hasn't changed. Okay. Kubo is his name. Okay. Now also, not only do you have a superpower move, but the enemies also do have a superpower move. Okay, after that, 5, 8, 9, 10. Not quite 10. What a game. 
Now, when this first game first came out, I don't think there was a physical version. I waited, because I wanted to get a physical version of this. I'm glad I waited. Alright, is he down? He's down. Alright, we've got a lead pipe in. On we go. Hopefully, the next level is going to be a little bit more brighter. Again, it's Liu Kang. <laughs> Hello, Liu Kang. What are we doing around here? Now, also, we can get electrified, and so can they, which is another brilliant touch of this game. Headbutted me. Liu Kang did not do that in Mortal Kombat. I always like doing the throws in these games. On this one, and of course, the other ones, when you throw an enemy across the screen, they can actually hit other enemies as well, which is a nice touch. Alright, I'm not going to be electrocuted. But he did. How cool was that? Right, okay, five hits. Six hits. You're not going to get as many hits with a lead pipe in. But it's strong, and of course, it's long range. And you can throw them as well. Okay, similar enemies doing similar things. That's some of that. There they go, brilliant. I love the fact they've kept the moves pretty much how it used to be. They should be. Not changed too much. Alright, money being electrified. We're gonna leave that. Alright, uppercuts. What will Comet be impressed with that one? <laughs> Have some of that. How cool do these guys look? They're just attacking with their hands in their pockets and just using their heads. That's all that, okay. Not many who get up after that. Also attack them in the air. There we go. Now I have to admit, I'm struggling with the controls. I really am, because of course, we've got more buttons than we would have had in the Mega Drive version. But I've always been like that. I do prefer using joysticks. I always have done, because I'm a, I love my old school. Right, we're in a train. 12 hits. Right, we've got four lives. Nice, 60 damage. Of course, boss battle can't be too far away. Right, now I believe this is a character which you can unlock. Okay, Apple. It'll take more than Apple, I think, to get through this. Have some of that. Set you on fire! <laughs> this is a good weapon, but it is it does drain your energy. It does get electrified. Right, a very, very big energy bar. Right. What a game! Get out of there. Do not want to be electrified. Who does? But I will set you on fire again. It's Liu Kang. Yeah, Axel's always been my favourite character. Always has been. Okay. I'm assuming it's probably got all the characters from all the other three games in one game. I imagine so. Blaze, Skate, probably. Max has got to be there. Right, right. Energy-wise, it's pretty even Steven, but I must get some energy if there is any. At the moment, there isn't, but there might be some in that box. Oh, my lord. Chicken! 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 I need chicken! I got it, my lord. Quite a lot of these games, you have food on the floor. You shouldn't do it in real life. Don't do it in real life. But here, it saves your bacon. Right. The tables have turned. Now, I've got a lot of energy, and she has not. I've got lead piping. She has not. It's great at a distance. Okay. There you go. Add some of that with a 13-hit combo. Stage one clear. What a game. Superb. Street of Rage 4. Okay, everybody, that's in my video. That's my pickup video for November, December 2020, and this is Jamie for Wallace Games. Please like the copy, share, please subscribe my channel, face a fan page, please on Twitch. To stop with Wallace Games, you'll find it fairly easily. Please remember to click the bell icon and notify you visit Low Fantastic. For the digital videos, you register on Pays of Fan Sheets, have been making, and live streams every Friday night, due time, very far up to Halloween week. So, so, take it easy. Ciao, bye. See ya. After an evil laugh and a flash of black. Uh. Ah, okay, this is Fred's journey. Fred, the journey. Ah, no. I quite like. This is good. This is good. I like this. Okay, so the game is Rick Dangerous, a platform game developed by Core Design, and I.
now. Right. Let's have a quick sometimes I'll shoot them, sometimes I won't. But anyway, <laughs> staying alive. That's my doorbell. Right, I'm not 100% sure what you're going to do here, because if you fall from here, you'll bounce. Ah, okay. These clues are in the correct... There are clues to... Okay, so the game, this is Soul Force. Soul Force? Soul Less, Jamie. Soul Less. Okay, so the game, this is Wiz. You play as Wiz, the wizard to retrieve the lantern, which was bought. Jamie, you're making mistakes already. As Wiz, the wizard, to retrieve the lantern, which contains bright magical fairy lights that keeps the evil spirits at bay across all the lands. It was stolen by the wart knows witch, by the wart... <laughs> the wart knows witch, the wart knows witch. You've got two warts and one nose. Restart, Jamie. Oh, got, got a key ring in there. Right, I've got a funny feeling this is not going to install, because I've got a funny feeling I don't have enough memory to do it. I've literally just put it in and I've got an update already. My lord. Um, clear some space on internal. Yes, I knew this was going to happen. Right, okay. 4.5 gigabytes. Okay, so the game is Street Rage 4, a beat em up game developed by Dot Emu, Lizzie Cube, and Guard Crush Games. A continuation of Sega's Street Rage series, released in 2020 for Windows, Microsoft Switch. Oh, we're doing this again, Jamie. Microsoft Switch. No, it's not Microsoft Switch. Oh. Little cheap, but really. Two achievements, eating off the ground. Yeah, you shouldn't eat food off the floor, but it works here. <laughs> 